which loves the sport of track and field and is proud to host this event today. It is my opinion, so I do not speak for all these distinguished people here. Oregon is perhaps more than any other state identified with the sport of track and field. Other sports, but probably like no other state, she is identified with track and field. Much of that stems from the growth and success of the track program at the University of Oregon in the mid-1970s, leading to the designation of Eugene as a track town USA. But, but, Oregon's track and field heritage, especially our record of Olympic success, predates that era considerably. Oregonian Bert Kerrigan won a bronze medal in the high jump in Athens in 1906. The name of Dick Fosbury of Medford and Oregon State will forever live in track and field history. He invented a new way to compete, uh, compete, complete a high jump called the Fosbury Flop. And he won the gold medal in Mexico in the 1968 Olympics. It's interesting, this one I did not know. There's a place called the Gilbert Museum right here in Salem. The name after Albert C. Gilbert, who founded the Rector Set. But Gilbert first entered notoriety as an Olympic gold medalist way back in the pole vault in London in 1908, tying with fellow American Edward Cook. But this is very unique. He accomplished that feat after inventing the pole vault box, the little metal box where competitors plant the end of their pole vault before vaulting over the bar. Another Oregonian won gold in London as well. Forrest Smithson was an OSU Beaver who defeated his favorite American teammates, John Garrels and Arthur Shaw to win the 110 meter hurdles. All total, 20 Oregonians have won Olympic medals in track and field. June 27, 2008, we entered a new era in track and field in Oregon when the U.S. Olympic trials returned to Eugene for the first time since Eugene hosted the trials in 1972, 1976, and in 1980. When the trials returned in 2012, it marked the fifth time they had been in Eugene. Oregonians, including me, have had the honor and the privilege to see some of the country and the world's greatest athletes complete. Athletes like Oregon's Ashton Eaton, Galen Rupp, and Ryan Bailey. Our past, as I've shown you this morning, glitters in gold, silver, and bronze. But we are here today to talk about the future. So it is my pleasure, along with the Speaker of the House, the Honorable Tina Kotek, to welcome Max, Mr. Max Siegel, the CEO of U.S. Track and Field to the Oregon Capitol, as well as to Oregon, my Oregon. There will be special announcements made by the following individual in the following orders, so I hope they're listening. <laughs> the Honorable. John Albert Kitzhopper, M.D. Following him, the University of Oregon President, Dr. President Michael Godfredson, and Coach Van Lanana from Track Town, USA. Please, first we will welcome Mr. Max Siegel. <clears throat> Thank you, it's an honor for us to be here today and on behalf of USA Track and Field, and the United States Olympic Committee, we are very pleased to announce that the U.S. Uh, Olympic team trials uh, for track and field will return to Eugene in the state of Oregon in 2016. Hey. I can tell you that in uh, 2012, the trials were nothing short of spectacular, and uh, we're excited to continue our collaboration with Track Town, the University of Oregon, uh, for what we know will be a spectacular event in 2016. Uh, last year, Hayward Field provided a backdrop for our Olympic team, um, which went on to dominate the Olympics uh, in a way that was uh, the best performance in the generation. And we believe that bringing the trials back to track town will prepare the team for an equally impressive performance in Rio. Uh, the USOC 
and USA Track and Field have a tremendous amount of uh, confidence in track town and we look forward to collaborating with the organizing committee uh, to have a, a wonderful event in 2016 and I think that we will all uh, remember 2012 as an experience that redefined uh, the overall competitive experience in that for the fans uh, for the Olympic trials. So with that we trust that you all will accept this uh, award and we look forward to lo working with Vin and the uh, local organizing committee University of Oregon for a successful 2016 trials. Thank you very much. Well, on behalf of the state of Oregon, we are indeed very pleased to accept this uh, honor. We look forward to uh, bringing the nation's best track and field athletes back to Tracktown, uh, USA. Uh, the state of Oregon, as you know, really embraces the sport of track and field. It's in our, it's in our DNA. Uh, it's really a part of, of who we are, and uh, we're looking forward to hosting the world's best uh, track and field team, Team USA, to our home soil again in 2016. In 2012, as you know, nearly 30 Olympians with some kind of tie to Oregon uh, participated in those trials. And three native Oregonians, Ashton Eaton, Galen Rupp, and Ryan Bailey, uh, came back with, uh, with uh, medals around their necks. A real proud tribute to this state and to, uh, and to uh, track town. Uh, furthermore, I think it's important to note that the Oregon Olympic trials uh, had the, uh, a $37 million impact on the local economy. Uh, and uh, the Track Town 12 commitment to sustainability really set the gold standard for uh, sustainability in putting on uh, sports events. So Oregon wel welcomes you back, uh, Oregonians welcome you back. We're delighted uh, that you made this decision. It was clearly the right decision and we will do all we can uh, to make sure that uh, this is a great experience for everybody involved. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you My name is Michael Goffertson, President of the University of Oregon and uh, on behalf of the entire university community, we are enormously pleased to bring this legendary event back to our campus and to historic Hayward Field. Uh, as president of the university, let me extend a warm welcome from the university uh, community to all of the athletes, coaches, and media and fans of track and field. Welcome back to Hayward Field. Welcome back to Eugene. We are as excited as we possibly could be and honored by this selection. Thank you, Max. I want to thank all of our partners uh, now and uh, during the event, certainly the state of Oregon, Lane County, the cities of Eugene and Springfield, and Tracktown USA. Together, a great partnership. Look forward to hosting uh, these trials. Max, we're honored by your decision, and we look forward to hosting you, and we will look, work very hard to make this a memorable event. Thank you very much. Well, <clears throat> my name is Vin Lanana, and I am the, uh, one of the co-chairs for the Olympic trials in 2012. I'd like to recognize Greg Irwin, who's over here, who was my, who was the co-chair. And I want to thank the governor, Senator Courtney, uh, Speaker Kotick, and of course, President Gofferson for coming here today. Uh, welcome, Max, and the folks from USA Track and Field. You know, we value, we, we appreciate this opportunity. This is not something that we take for granted. We know that you had a lot of choices. We know that this is such a valuable product and uh, we will do our very best to accept that responsibility and we will accept it seriously. We will do every, everything in our energy, our power, and we will take the passion that defines Tracktown USA and we'll make it into something even better than it was in 2012. Um, Hayward Field is special and Bill Bowerman's leadership was something spectacular, and what we do is we try to follow in those footsteps. 2012 had every state in the United States was represented by our volunteers. We had 400 media, all the athletes, the coaches, and our our goal in 2016 is to see how far our reach can actually extend. We have members of our steering committee today are here. Uh, as I said, Greg Irwin, Henry Levert, uh, some of our athletes are here. We look forward, we really look forward to taking this shared vision that USA Track and Field has to support our athletes short term and long term. And we'll do everything we can to help Team USA, the number one team in the world, continue its dominance. So we are pleased 
by this, by this honor. We do not take it for granted, and we appreciate it, and we're looking forward to uh, putting on a big show in 2016. And uh, we thank you all for coming here today. I'm going to hand it over to our capable leader here, Senator Courtney. You're sure that we, you're going to, no matter what I say, you're not going to change your mind? It's a done deal. All right. <laughs> Before I officially close, there is one event in track and field that before I pass from this earth, mm -hmm. Coach Villanueva is about to go crazy. He knows what it is. And I would just ask that in the, the greatness of track and field, which is a dynamic sport, it's a creative sport, it's not afraid of change, but I want to see a co-ed relay. That's what I'd love to see is a co-ed relay. I don't care if it's the four by four. I don't care if it's the four by one. You know what I'm talking about, a co-ed relay. Two men and women <laughs> on the team and going for it because I will guarantee you athletes would pay. They'd do anything to be on that team. So that's just one pitch. <laughs> Having said that, and I know I'm not going to win, but it is a brilliant idea. <laughs> Let me close with this. On February 19th, we had the honor of hosting the 2012 Olympic decathlon gold medalist Aston Eaton in the Senate chamber. With the title of the Olympic decathlete golden medalist goes to claim the greatest athlete in the world. I had a little fun with Ashton in a reception. And what it's like this is, Ashton Eaton was a star at Mountain View High School in Bend. There was an individual named Aaron Campbell who was starring for Summit High School right across the town. Ashton won the state championships in the 400 meter and in the long jump. But... He lost the 200-meter dash to Aaron Campbell. He's edged him out. And I asked him about it, and he completely lit up and turned red. He says, I remember him so very well, Peter. <laughs> Here he is, the gold medalist, and I think Campbell is now the coach at Emory University, I believe, where he is. They keep in conduct. But standing here today, I can't help but think of Aston Eaton and Aaron Campbell across our state. As track season and thousands of Oregon high school young people are competing every day as I speak, dreaming about the Olympics, what Aaron and Ashton's story tells us is that maybe today we know that there are Olympic champions in our state. But history tells us that just maybe today there are high school athletes that will participate here in Oregon in these Olympic trials and will stand on the podium of Rio de Janeiro. Thank you very much. <laughs>